Hello and welcome back to the Sunday special episode of the UA Podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I'm Jared Freed. We are very excited. Uh, we have a very special guest. Uh, you can see him in the movie, uh, Who Invented... Who Invented? Who Invited Charlie? That's right. And it's coming out. Uh, Adam Pally, thank uh, you for coming on. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Good to see you. And you yeah. might know him from Happy Endings or the Mindy Project, which I was a super fan of. Oh, so cool. Oh, love great. your work in that. Oh, thank you. Um, such a funny show, such a funny actor. And this movie, I saw the um so I I saw the trailer. Mm. What I love about it mm. is like it it's set in COVID, right? Yes, it is. And some people have like tried a set in COVID thing, but mm. I feel like it was either like too soon or too dark. And this is like I feel like one of the first comedy kind of things yes, that are coming out of it. Yeah. I mean, I look back on that time. It, you know, it's set in lockdown, mm -hmm. and uh, I look back at that time n n as as horrible as it was. There was like a nostalgia to it because you're like really trapped with people, and yeah. you're spending a lot of time. With also, them. you're yeah. never gonna like forget. Like no. you might, you know, 2018. You might go, "What happened that year?" 2020. No, you're marked. You yeah. know who you were with, where you were. Exactly. You know, you, you feel like 100%. we're in it. And then you kind of feel like everyone who's now been around for that, which is everyone, um, can kind of have a shared experience of mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, we, we were all it was a weird time for everyone. Yes, it's 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 definitely an equalizer. Yeah. Well, well, and it's set in the Hamptons. Yes, it's set in New York City. Yeah. Um, at, which was like a thing that that definitely happened. I mean, I I. Uh, I'm guilty of as as well. It was like people were looking to get out of the city, right? And, and uh, so it wasn't uncommon for there to be a rush to. Oh, my favorite! My favorite Instagram posts were the people saying goodbye to New York City. Uh, the ones yeah. who be like goodbye. I had I frolicked your streets. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you'd be like, what? What? It was, <laughs> and they're it like, was... I, I'm off to the Hamptons now. I hopefully I'm back. You yeah. know, like it was shocking how quickly this. City became like was designated like a you know station nine war zone. Right. You know what I mean? And people were like, "You gotta run!" You know what I mean? But it was a very have have nots moment. You're mm -hmm. like, uh, they're like, "Where are you going?" Nowhere. Yeah, no, it was. <laughs> I'm yeah. staying here. Yeah. I, I don't know where. And then to it was go. like there was like the the haves would be like, "I heard the city is." Right. Yes. You know, <laughs> How is it there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Which is still people still say that. Like yeah. I was in California last week and we saw my friend's mother and she was like, How's New York? Is it uh and I was like, LA's a war zone. <laughs> like, you know, New York is great. Anyone who didn't come back still talks about New York like it's in like The Last of Us. Yeah, it really does. And you're like, actually New York is a thriving <laughs> socioeconomic right. uh, melting pot. It's a, it's a little bit of a political dog whistle. You know who yeah. you're talking to right away when they're like, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah here we go. Oh, uh, here we go. Heard yeah. I've, I've heard about what's going on in the metropolitan area. Yeah. Like, <laughs> all right. Well, hold on. So you do this movie and uh, uh, when you did you tape it during lockdown or, or is it just... I mean, it was shot uh, during, during COVID. You know, there was definitely, it was like some during one of the crons. Uh, I don't know if it was like Betacron or Omicron, one of the like sweeping crons, and right, and you know we shot for six weeks, and you know you 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 try try you try not to get COVID. Well, but is it is it is it you know it, so this isn't like real life. We're in COVID. This is you guys were imagining. We were looking back a couple a, years. A couple behind. years. Yeah, yeah, that's the timeline of it. But it was very easy to do that. When right. You're also at the same time, like avoiding Omicron. You know, there's like right. a new set of weird stuff that you have to deal with. So the premise of the movie is there's this family that goes from New York City to the Hamptons and then you play Charlie. Yes, I, it, it's about um, Reed Scott uh, from Veep um, and uh, Venom and Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Uh, it, it plays my old college roommate and uh, he has it together okay. essentially. And we run into each other kind of in like February of 2020. And so then in in the lockdown, I show up at their house as an unwanted guest. So you're like the single family friend-ish guy. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would be like, if you showed up to one of your married friends. If I came. In the, 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 <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> what up, yeah. everybody? So it's yes. really that moment of, what up, everybody? I'm here. Kind of, but it's more, you know, the guy has to first, you know, he has to ingratiate himself and mm -hmm. then, you know, but then he becomes a family member pretty quick and then you're dealing with all that stuff. So it, yeah, it is. It's, it, it's kind of like that. Now, you have a show called 101 Places to Party Before You Die. Yeah. 
You did it with also not COVID friendly. Not COVID friendly. <laughs> no, um, I don't. Is there a COVID friendly? I don't think there is a. I if mean, it is, I really don't listen, want to watch it. I know. Borders <laughs> maybe COVID friendly. Yeah, right, I prefer being an enemy of COVID. Yeah. Right. Uh, now we, we we have an audience that wants to go out, wants to party, wants yeah. to know the place to go. You traveled the world. Uh, America. America. <laughs> North America. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you guys go to Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. That is the world. Okay. That is the world. Yeah, the world. My, it's my whole, right? world. Yeah. North America. <laughs> North America. Yeah. Where people, everyone. We get kind of like hit up of like, where do I go in my town? Where do I, what oh, do I do? Okay. What's the standout places to party? Well, I mean, from, your, from the show you did with John Gamers, I mean, hilarious you know, comic. There too. were so many different um, cities. We went to eight different cities and, and truly like they're all different and then, and then kind of similar in the same way, which is that people want to go out and mm. have a good time. Um, and, uh, you know, Richmond, Virginia was a place that I didn't know much about as a Jew. You and Gabriel uh, said the same thing. Yeah. Both of you both said Richmond. Yes. I would say like if you're a New Yorker and you're dating and you're looking and it's like, let's go for a trip, one of our first trips, and you don't want to spend a lot of money, but you want to impress and you want to have a good time with the finer things in life, uh, go to Richmond, Virginia. I've been to Richmond twice. All the girls listening who are whose you know boyfriends have booked the rich, they're like don't want to spend a lot of money. What? Yeah, no, truly. I mean, that's thanks like, a lot. When they, well, I mean, they they when they put it on our itinerary, I was like, you guys know I'm not really like allowed there. Oh. <laughs> and they were like, no, trust me, it's like it's really cool. It's like come around. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. It's like got a lot of monuments. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's usually not a place where someone like me is okay. And they and they were like, no, no, it's 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 fine. And then we got there, and it really like, it is kind of Portland East. Wow, I mean, people wouldn't That's know cool. that. Yeah, yeah. So no, like, I would say, I mean, you'd say like a weekend trip, girls oh, trip, guys trip, and, pe- and there's bars and the best, some of the best bars I've ever been to, and and I believe the most Michelin stars per square capita oh. in the United States. Really, yes. I did not know that. I didn't know that because I think that'd be New York. Right. You would think I've been to. Well, there's more people in New York, so you have to. It's oh, like it's, per person, it's like okay. per person. So it's like the amount of people that live there, like the amount of restaurants that are there. You you're probably gonna walk into. A what, it's easy to get easier to probably get a reservation. Than sure, like well, sure, yeah. You can walk in. I yeah. mean, I I one of the better delis is there that I've been to. Pearlies. Shout them out. Shout baby. out Pearlies. Shout Plug out Pearlies. City. Yeah. yeah. No, that, I would say, and and the best burger I've ever had was there at this place called Man. Cobra Burger. We are now sponsored by the Richmond right. Tourism Bureau. <laughs> so uh, I got news for you. It's not a hefty bag. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the premise of the show is you just go to all these places in North America and you see and you kind of rank the that's we don't rank. No, no. The, the premise of the it's show. It's on HBO. You can watch it you on, can HBO watch on HBO Plus HBO, right now. Yeah. The, plem- the, the, premise. the premise of the show is more just about like two guys who are best friends okay. who grew up working in comedy traveling the country and are like uh now doing it again and with only really one focus which is to have as much fun as possible and you guys are partiers we party yeah yeah we party what what did your what did your wife think of the show (laughs) uh as long as i'm i mean she likes that i'm not in the house it's like Get and out we have there. kids she's and we're like, married. I have a show idea for you now that <laughs> lockdown is over. Yeah, she's like, how about work? Does that sound like a TV show? How about you make some money? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and I was like, sure, I'll make some money if I can do it by getting wasted with Gabrus. And she's like, I don't care. <laughs> Just get <laughs> whatever, the fuck out Whatever there. you need to do. You have three kids. You're married. When yes. did you get married? How long? How'd you guys meet? I'm this is a dating show. 13th year of marriage. Oh, wow. 13th yeah, year. Yeah, I'm old. I'm 41. I mean, I'm 38. I'm right behind you. Yeah, okay. you're younger than me, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> significantly. Uh, you, yeah. Um, how'd you meet 13 years ago? Well, so uh, we have a very romantic story. Uh, we we were high school sweethearts. We met as kids. Really? And I was 15, and she was 16, and she was a year older than me. And um, we were like best friends, and then dating, and like families became close. And then she went to college, and we broke up. And then I went to college, and everything you know life goes on mm. and then we both moved back to new york within like a, y- a year and a half of each other and 
we're like, oh, you're here, you're here. And we started dating. And then the next thing you know, we were married. And then we had kids. This is a very that's, cute story. That's that in our, our story page, if I've ever heard one. Totally. That's on the yeah. wedding website. That's, yeah. a, that's a great story that our listenership is like, go fuck yourself. Oh, of course. People, <laughs> yeah. hate, people hate it. And, you know, uh, to that, I say, I hate it, too. Right. Uh, I like that you broke up. Yeah. I think that's, that, that's the interesting part. Well, right? I mean, I yeah. think, I, I don't know. You know, we all, we stayed in touch, you know, obviously, because okay. I think, we we really did like her parents were high school sweethearts my parents are high school sweethearts they're we're from new york city jews like there's something very like you familial know, familial about it and so we stayed in touch even during the breakup but the breakup felt very normal as well because okay. it was like college college yeah, and I, went, I went to the university of arizona didn't feel personal no uh, yeah. but if it, but it was like also did because you were you were dating people i mean i dated someone for a while or like you know you just start to feel yourself a little you're like hey this is who i am and so the luxury of that and then starting to date again as as like professional people like she she had um uh, graduated the school of visual arts by the time we got back together and like was like an artist you know and like i knew her in high school and mm. so it was like it's a whole new person you know, right. that like... Well, it, it's also what you mentioned of your parents being high school sweethearts, her parents. Like, there is a certain, like, you know, if your parents... it's a, You're entering... That's a, a religion of its own. Yeah. Sure. Something you're familiar with. I was with. thinking that. Yeah. Like, it does seem like, oh, we have, like, a normal, healthy family background. Like, we... Like, it's <laughs> like a... It almost feels like you're in a family of actors. Right. <laughs> right. Kind of, a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit like that. But I think, I think the other thing that it does, which I which I'm so grateful for in a lot of ways is especially um, talking to my single friends and then also talking to my married friends who've been married even longer than me, but didn't know their partner uh, as a kid. Right. By having parents like that, it really does give you the, the vision of what a healthy relationship can kind of be by, I always say like, in a marriage, you should care less, not more. As time, like you know, like things shouldn't bother you more; they should bother you less because you know that person. Give me an example. Like their annoying habits. You're saying annoying yeah. habits, or even just physical traits, or for real, <laughs> yeah. like right. you know, like things shouldn't bother you more. If things are bothering you more, it's something unchecked within the relationship or yourself. And I think watching my parents kind of navigate that and never letting go of the rope, never. And they fought and there was times where like, you know, my dad would be gone, like they'd be yelling at each other, all, all the normal shit that you, you know, grow up with, mm -hmm. but they never let go of the rope. And I think that was because they didn't let go of the rope before I got there. You know, they were like, no, we're, we love each other. We're doing this and it's gonna be fucking shitty sometimes. And like you, you should care less about those things and more about the person. Well, I love that. I, I love that. And also what you said, the, the word, the vision, you know, yeah. like, oh, I see how this works out. So I'm with yeah. someone who from a similar, you know, high school background. Oh, I see how it worked with them. So I can understand that it can work with us. Yeah. As high school sweethearts, so to speak. And yeah. I, right. And yeah. I imagine just seeing your parents as being really happy with each other. It's, only, it's a, not like they were like, oh, we and we worked it out and we're kind of just here. And no, no. My, like, <laughs> like both her parents yeah. and my parents really it, shockingly like they loved being around each other and we're like physical with each other which is like like i grew up in one of those houses where i was like oh stop it. it's gross like right family? yeah not to me <laughs> yes to me and like you know like yeah. also they were they like were into each other and mm -hmm. they also my parents were artists they were lounge singers when i was a kid they they had a band together called oh, wow. pally and pal and they toured the country playing cover at like Jewish resorts and stuff, and like that's how they made money. So cool. Really? Yeah, my dad would play the Empire Diner or Bemelman's or Elaine's, and my mom would sing. It's and like Dirty Dancing. Right? Uh, a little yeah. older than that. It's more like a, a movie, pro but uh, the Fabulous Baker Boys. Have you ever seen that movie? I haven't. I haven't it's like that. Uh, but um, yeah, it, uh, they were so like they worked together and they worked together in entertainment. They had like an act. And, Did like, you grow up in like the village? Or are you like yeah, from I the Stuyvesant Town? Yeah. So this is like a very New York City story of a certain era. In the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Early 80s. 
Wow. So, uh, but when you went to Arizona, was it for acting? No, comedy? I, I didn't want to do that. I had all, always, as a kid, wanted to make movies, and 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 I was in the uh, like I really found myself in high school uh, in like the drama and TV department after mm. I um, realized I wasn't going to be an athlete. You know, like I my first year of high school I was on three. It was on like a three sport athlete, and then my summer. I didn't do anything. And then my sophomore year, I was like a no sport athlete. <laughs> you know, I was like, this is not going to work. The for dream me. is yeah, over. The dream is well, over. Well, that's how Gabrus and I connected because we are of the the small sliver of 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 people who played high school football and swam. Yeah, no, I played high school. Gabrus and I talk about that. I played high school football as well. <laughs> yeah. So this is, to be in. So, All the Jews on the football team. That's right. Well, Jewish they don't last. <laughs> they don't last. And Gabrus would love that you called him a Jew, but he is oh, not. Okay. No. <laughs> He's not. Well, so he's you, as close as you can get, though. <laughs> he's very Long Island, I would say. Yeah, he's Long Island, but also just Emeritus. like his his his, his soul. essence is like, <laughs> yeah. Well, so you go from Arizona, and then you go into like comedy world. Like, I mean, like, well, so I was I was doing sketches and making films uh, in high school. I I uh, took over the morning announcements at my high school in New Jersey, uh, which is Livingston High School, and I um would make sketches and like do, it was, you know, really, you know, pedestrian, but I would edit them and shoot them and act in them and do the whole thing. Mm. And then I started to use that as like my, I would apply to art schools and stuff. And I got into like uh, one, two schools. One was Arizona and one was a really great film school, SUNY Purchase, which is right kind of in Westchester. Yeah. And SUNY Purchase is like really respected as a film school, like really great writers have, and actors and, have come out of there and I went to SUNY Purchase to visit which is in Westchester and it's very nice and you know and then I went to Arizona to visit and it was like Arizona <laughs> like, and I was like yeah. well I'm not gonna go to that right, right. school in Westchester <laughs> yeah I was to like New York I'm right. gonna go to Arizona everyone's like in a bikini where the, yeah we're like yeah, yeah we're like the shorts say you a on the butt cheeks like yeah. i'm gonna go there <laughs> going to butt cheek you yeah yeah and i did and i majored yeah. in a cup in in blonde yes and uh cocaine <laughs> with a minor in cocaine yeah. um and loved it and was truly just like i made i i have some of my best friends that i you know yeah uh lo love but uh when i was 20 i was like this is not gonna work like For i just life. like yeah like <laughs> after two and a half years i was just like looking around being like god like where do these people go we're like looking at friends like kind of graduate and then work in their dad's dealerships you know mm. and you're like that is not really for me i i i think i have something else so i kind of cut bait left school in the middle and moved back to new york at at 20 and as soon as i got back here i um got linked up with a buddy uh, uh, from, I had a, I made a, a really close friend in U of A who his other, had another best friend who was going through a similar thing. He linked us up and uh, we moved back to New York and signed up at the UCB and I just started. And this was like UCB era before like and everyone was signing up thinking that like fame 20... was around the corner. Oh yeah, this the, was, this there was, was no UC, fame. This was before, like UCB, like if, if you know it, like you know, I, I I remember when I started doing comedy, like people would sign up being like you couldn't get signed up. Like the list was like wait list, wait list, wait yeah. list. And this is probably prior to that era. This era. is like two thousand and one, right? Or two thousand. So, uh, you yeah, it was on Twenty Second Street. Mm -hmm. The offices were on Twenty Third Street, um, between Seventh and Eighth, over the Malibu Diner, which is still there, um, and. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty like it was an, it was a great time. But I had also um, used some of my high school uh, clips and gotten myself into the actor studio. Mm. So during the day, I was going to the actor studio and getting like formal training, and then at night, I was uh, going to UCB and interning and doing shows and taking classes. And so it was like I did that for for you know, probably 10 years. Well, the reason I'm bringing it up is to bring like, to, you know, to bring it to this podcast, you're 
dating at that at some point you're doing UCB yes. interning you're dating your high school, high school sweetheart again, sweetheart again. Yeah. yes and then you know at some point along the lines you get on the show happy endings yes and you're dating your high school sweet how do you go well we were married we get so we you're got married right. at that I, point I, I, yeah how I was, does the relationship change you, I mean, yeah. you go from you go from interning at UCB to yes. I'm on a major sitcom on ABC. These it wasn't are, as like overnight as that. Sure, you know, I I think that I think that looking back, sometimes you can look back on it and feel that it's a ladder when it's really more of a hike. For sure. And and so like, um, one of the first things that happened in my career was I, I auditioned cold for uh, Ang Lee and booked a. Uh, a role in his follow-up to Brokeback Mountain, which was called Taking Woodstock. Mm. Um, and I was subsequently uh, edited out of that movie. <laughs> I'm still in it a little, uh, but not the as much. And um, that movie did, did terribly. It was like a huge flop. So I- I didn't know there was a sequel. To, it's not a sequel. Oh, it's okay. just like, <laughs> it was a big deal because Brokeback Mountain had like just won the the Academy Award, right. and this was his next movie. Oh, okay. It was so like, like the, okay, the next it movie it was like a this. huge, like I was in it variety. It wasn't like the, you know, the Cowboys <laughs> going off and having a family. No, okay. no, this was about, Wood, this was about okay. the, this was about <laughs> making. We moved to Woodstock okay. and. Yeah, no, this is about the making <laughs> of the, the music festival. <laughs> and not it. the one with Limp Bizkit, I'm just guessing by your age. <laughs> the, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just imagining the it's broke back sequel. <laughs> yeah, the broke back sequel. I don't even know how that movie ended. I, I, not, <laughs> not well. Oh, they died. Okay. Not well. I don't know. I don't uh, know. Okay. So maybe they didn't adopt. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then, uh, so the, I got that, and then that kind of was in the papers and stuff, and that led mm. to getting an agent, and then mm. the, the agent, you, you know, things you know when you're auditioning for a TV show that your life could change. So it's right. it's not. It's a not like a lottery ticket, and then all of a sudden you have to pay the taxes. It's do you know what I mean? Where it's like right, it, it was, it's a, it's a way slower. But I would yeah. assume you know the relationship has to change. Yeah, sure. Alongside that, like you know, because yeah. there's people probably dating someone. If you're dating someone young, you got to go through life together, and like you know, wh how is that? Is it hard? Is it was it easy? Was there ever a moment where you're like? I'm in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. You know, like... I, ha I have that moment daily. <laughs> okay. I have that moment daily. Uh, no, I mean, I think, you know, we've been through a lot of ups and downs. And, um, you know, one of the big things that happened... When we first moved out of New York, when I booked Happy Endings, my wife was uh, owned a clothing store that was very successful in Montclair, New Jersey. Mm. And we had been married for, like, three years. And... You know, or not three years, less than that, but like we've been engaged. You know, it was like a big deal to leave New York for her. I mean, she was like crushing. Right. But she really wanted to go. She wanted to have a family. And, and so by the time we got to LA, I had art, like Happy Endings was already in motion and I knew all those people. And so it just felt like the life we had in New York was just kind of continuing in, in a different place it didn't feel crazy different and i don't think and i think that's luckily what's been able to keep it going through that is that it doesn't feel much different than when we were 15 and 16 and i think that's 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 just the luck of it that's I, yeah really you know nice. um so even when things get crazy or out of control you know i've certainly dealt with <laughs> my my own ups and downs um no one, yeah, you just don't let go of the rope. So you've never been on the apps, but I'm sure you've seen people. I've never been on the apps, but like, yeah, I've, my sisters were on the apps for a little. I have two younger sisters and my cousins are all on the apps and stuff. So as a married person who's like never been on the apps, what is yeah. your like take on them? I, I have no take on them. I like, I think it's probably like, it's great, right? Like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like people that have a take on them sound like dinosaurs. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I'm cool. I'm yeah, cool. It's like, or like, or even the other way, it's like people being like, in my day, we used to meet people at bars. It's yeah. like, well, it's not, 
It can't, it's not safe. Well, I think t- you know? today's email right. is really about temptation. And, you know, like... The, well, temptation is a different thing. Well, <laughs> well the apps are a, are a tool, I guess, for temptation. Right. Yeah. You, but you, if you're single, what's the... what's the? Well, well maybe we're not. There we, <laughs> get, there we get into our email. Well, yeah. um, also, I, uh, as a partier, what's your go-to drink? It depends. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm literally a garbage disposal. I mean, like, I'm the same way. Like, I'll, I'll drink it all. I'll drink it all. So I, I, I it depends on the. I think. You have What'd to, you drink last night? Last night I drank a, a coffee mug full of whiskey while I performed. <laughs> this, is just, this is very funny. Our, uh, our production team told us that you were sober coming into this episode. <laughs> so we was like, I was very confused. Someone else. I, they were like, don't mention alcohol. <laughs> I did not know that. We flagged Julia, one of our coworkers, flagged that, and I was like, "Oh, I had no idea." Like flagged, but you were so like not to offer all you any alcohol, alcohol like around the room. Well, she was well, like, it is sober. It I was is like, like barely new. Well, so that would be. That would be I was weird. like, "Pally's coming. We gotta get fucked up." Well, I, had I known, <laughs> we got no. all those canned cocktails here, faux pas. Oh, I thought it was just uh, sparkling water. Um, <laughs> No, and I the also sparkling don't water want. makes you want to have a bacon, egg, and cheese and take a nap. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> everything makes me want to. I, I don't want that 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 drink, but I'm not sober either. <laughs> mug of whiskey. It was a mug of whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, we heard he's sober. I was like, I texted Allison. I go, is uh, I was like, is he sober? She goes, we were getting fucked up last week. Yeah, we had dinner last week. Yeah. And- <laughs> Drank a bottle of red wine. Right. Was that was like, the only thing they told us about you. Yeah, that's all we knew. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, and, and I, I'm just going to guess that they are mixing me up with a different gene. <laughs> because my clients. friend, my friend, my good friend, uh, we can beep this name, is a famous Jew who is famously sober. Mm. Oh, okay. And I'm going to guess right now. That someone mixed up the two of us. I Hilarious. That's racist. No. Julia's like a big fan of you in particular. <laughs> she can't be that big a fan. I have, <laughs> it's not, I have a show. Me. I yeah. literally <laughs> have a show on television right now. Yeah. She's a where I Jew, get so I fucked up <laughs> right. for money. For money. And then you walked in, you go, ah, I go, how what's going on? Just hung over. I was yeah. like, okay. I don't Everyone think... thought I fell off the wagon. Right. No, 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 I'm <laughs> fine. I never got on the wagon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, oh fuck, we were this guy's messing up his life. No, I walked <laughs> in and then come I literally here. walked in and one of my um good friend's daughter, who's now my good friend, works here. Uh and I came in and I was like, Hey Ruby. And she yeah. she played on the show last night, gave her a big hug, and I was That's like, so You were so great, give me your Venmo, I pay you. And oh, can you plug in my uh weed? Pen is <laughs> dying on the subway. Oh <laughs> so God. if the office thinks I'm sober, today is like a real mind fuck. Right. right. They're like, oh my this God. This is where you come yeah. to, things re- look, to rebound. <laughs> things look grief in the pally house. <laughs> well, okay. So uh, we'll get your mug of whiskey ready for after you. the show. Yeah. Uh, we won't be walking on eggshells. I'm glad we clarified that. Me too. Yeah, and no. listen, we want everyone to go. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's going to be on Netflix, uh, the movie. Is it on Netflix? I don't know is where it, it is. No, it's it's streaming right now. <laughs> this? It's on Netflix. You still got to right? buy it, I think. You still got to buy, buy it. it. Yeah, you we're buy still it. we're still I'm we're waiting to pull that trigger because I like when you buy something. Me too. I yeah. like owning it. <laughs> yeah. I like having it in my computer. So, I like I like it. So we want people to go buy this movie. Yeah, go we want buy it. make it a date night, make it your night like this is going to be a fun look back on COVID. Yes. I think it's fun to watch with whoever you were probably in COVID with. Right. right That's now. great or who you weren't. You can you can uh, swap stories. Swap stories, but it's romantic. It's fun. It's it's funny uh, and it's a great hangout movie. It's called Who Invited Charlie. Mm-hmm. So go, 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 search it out. It's on all the platforms, I'm sure, that you can find. Yeah, wherever you buy movies. Apple movies, all Apple, that stuff. Apple, Amazon. Uh, I, I think that's it, but I don't know. I don't know where else you buy movies. <laughs> Criterion collection, I don't know, but it's there. Well, awesome. Let's get to the email. All right, I'm going to read the email. Right, go for it. This is a, a male writer. Okay. J&J, respective feathers. Jared, I caught you in San Francisco last time you were here. Fantastic. And Jordana, you should know that I've seen faux pas in the stories of multiple hotties I follow on Instagram. Kudos to you for making the unofficial drink of, of hot over shares, not to mention making the official podcast of hot over shares. Background. Six-ish years ago, I broke up from a 10-year relationship, started dating again at 39. The apps were amazing. Lots of fun. Amazingly, lots of learning about what I wanted versus needed. 
For the first time in my life, I was single, had money, and had the confidence of having succeeded in a career all at the same time. Then a few years in, I wasn't really looking for her, but I found her. Wow. Sounds romantic. romantic. Truly, I think, the one. My random passion, passionate hobby is her career. She makes great money, but doesn't make more than me. <laughs> the perfect woman. <laughs> this guy sucks. <laughs> She loves to eat. Adam hates Wait, this guy worse. immediately. It gets guy. worse. It, gets it worse. doesn't get better. Yeah. She loves to eat, but is naturally lean. <laughs> She's age appropriate, but still a libido match. <laughs> Likes to travel. Loves my dog. Thinks I'm funny. Great, right? No. She's better than I'd allow myself to believe was possible. And yet, the deal. I keep swiping on the apps almost two years in to be clear. I have no interest in meeting any of these new app women, but I still like seeing what's out there and I, and get a little ego stroke when someone likes me to put it in free freedies. I guess that's you. I mean, that's me. Yeah. This is bad that this is how I'm viewed. Ready? I still like thinking I could fuck. Okay. That's um, something I would say. <laughs> Also, I've never so <laughs> swiped right or contacted anyone because none have come close to what I have in my girlfriend. Some of them are lean but have to work for it. <laughs> they don't eat. <laughs> yes, if my wonderful new girlfriend knew I was swiping, she'd probably be upset. Hurt even. I know that. But the truth is, every time I take a shit and do some people shopping, left swipe left on the apps, I'm more certain that I found the one in her. So sweet. So, Jordana, I know this will probably push your ick button and those of the thousands of young female listeners who pray every night that a prince might arrive and fulfill their suburban white picket fantasies. But aren't we all constantly judging our partners against the alternatives in our minds, if not on our phones? And Jared, I imagine this email will put you in the position of needing to take the anti-dude side. I accept that too. But come on, bro. <laughs> I know I'm not the only person swiping for serotonin on the can. <laughs> so seriously, what's the harm? If anything... Hot swiping has strengthened my relationship, and I'm not so egotistical to believe that by not matching with someone on the apps, I'm hurting anyone. I know it sounds gross, but is it? If so, why? Sincerely addicted to what the to what the click did. P.S. My lady is not on the apps, and I'll never interact with anyone on there. And even if someone we both know sees me, I'll never interact with them. If faced with screenshots of my profile being up, I'll simply respond with the truth. I've never once talked to or matched with a single woman since we started dating ever. Adam, what do you think? You seem you seem disgusted. <laughs> First of all, I could give two shits about the anti-dude <laughs> sentiment right. of your listeners. Uh, and secondly, my advice for this guy yeah. would be to have a couple drinks, get in his car, and drive it towards a cliff. <laughs> because he's a f dog shit person who well, <laughs> just, who's both misogynistic mm. and insecure. And has 100% messaged girls. 100%. No one, the lady doth protest too much. Right. right. How many times did he say he didn't? Five? Well, we never said you did. Right, no one He asked. is messaging girls. Right. He's, he's fucking girls on there. Probably, even if he's not, like, fucking them physically, he's definitely, like, having them send pics. Mentally. Mentally. Me masturbating Masturbating to them. To yes. them. Not that that, and like, whatever, do whatever you want. But this guy's like, he's some like magnanimous guy. He's like turning it around and being like, well, what's the harm in it? It's right. like, well, the this only is harm. actually good for her. The only what? harm in it is that you're lying to her. <laughs> There's no well, harm in it if you tell her what. Yeah, go tell her what you're doing and see if she's like, I don't want you doing that. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's done a he's like, And he already has a whole story for if she finds out. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, already, yeah. Written the, already written the written the apology note. Yeah, it's like basically that is an admission because he feels guilty. So yeah. he emailed if it's real. And he emailed here and told you all the innocent reasons it, in his head. Why that he thinks it's why okay. It's okay. Yeah. He probably felt great writing this email to us. Oh, he's, 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 he's on the cloud first nine. Time. That's he's the most annoying been, part of it. Yeah, he's he, on cloud nine. He thinks he's absconded from like any wrongdoing. And the truth is the only wrongdoing that's really going on is in his own head and relationship. So he needs to either like figure out why he's so insecure mm. that he needs to get a serotonin push from a dating app. Like, throw a fucking fit pick up, bro. Catch a couple <laughs> likes. See if that doesn't cure your serotonin. Yeah. Well, well, I was going to say, why doesn't he just go look at an Instagram model like why, a normal like, it's person? Truly, right. It's truly over the edge. I, as I'm saying, this guy's a bad dude. And, and, and if he's listening... <laughs> 
He's a bad guy. Like, fix it. <laughs> come back a good guy. Write us an email in a year. Right. Where you're like, you know what? I stopped going on the apps. I don't even care if he tells. He's not a teller. Just stop going on the apps. Yeah. And find a new way to feel good about yourself. I'll take him at. Let's take him at his word for what two word? seconds. I, I get that he's a piece of shit. You know, like I. I the, what? There's no, nothing the, in that, that. He's never messaged that the, everything he's saying. Even still. Uh, even still, I agree. But I'm saying. It's weird to me. He hasn't even tried life without the apps. Like he never mentions this. I deleted them and I'm addicted. Like no, but he did, and he went back when the relationship became a relationship. You mm. know what I mean? Like well, he this, doesn't say that. I'm saying, but that's you know, I'm telling you what happened. Like mm. even if he didn't delete them, he wasn't on them for at least a little bit of time. Right. And then even if he was on them and he was addicted to the apps, it's just like mental porn. Like yeah, he he's not he's not doing the thing that that. He's having like a mental break, which is which is fine, but he's not associating what he's doing with with the wrong the wrongness of yeah. it. Yes. And like all he has to do is like go on OnlyFans. You can message message those girls all you want <laughs> and pay them money and yeah. and and support a career. Yeah, or, or whatever. Like there, there's totally chill ways to do this if that's what you want. Would you consider that cheating? It, OnlyFans? Not really. Not in my relate. Like, if I found out my wife was like going on OnlyFans and looking at dick pics, I'd be like, "All right." Like, <laughs> I would. Uh, right. It's like what? It's so. There's so many ins and outs of right. what, what that well, is. Well, it does like, seem like less. I agree. It does seem like less of an issue than going on a dating app where the pur purpose is to message people to date or hook up with. Right, because it's also it's also devious. He's also. He's also preying on on like the 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 view. Even if he's not messaging them, mm -hmm. right? Then what's the point? Well, they're they're wasting, liking. They're swiping the right, and yeah. he's feeling good. That's fucked up. Like, just put a pic on yeah. Instagram. I agree you with sociopath. you. Sociopath. Right. I agree with you that he's extremely insecure too, because you even look at the way that he describes everything his about the right. everything about the email is. She insecure. makes money, yeah. but doesn't make more money than me. That, what the fuck is that? Right. Like that's right. that's right. how you're. Those the are the first things. That? Right. Those are the first what things you're using. To if describe you can't this date a woman that makes more money than you, you are a piece of shit. Well, <laughs> here's he, he. What's what's the most? There's nothing to defend here, but the most annoying part to, of this email. Is he has found a way to take things that people do. Like, if you're a month into a relationship that's like not been labeled yet and you're still on the apps, that can happen. Sure. Right. You know, yeah. so he's going, we're all just on the apps looking for a little ego. And it's like, no, 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 you're two years into a relationship, you know, claiming, well, well, he's knowingly trying, doing he's wrong. He's trying to justify right. behavior that is sociopathically wrong. He's yeah. lying to the women but, on the apps, he's mm -hmm. lying to his partner. And he's telling you the reason he's mm -hmm. doing it is because he needs a little daddy needs to feel like he right. can still fuck. <laughs> right. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, he's justifying it all so he doesn't have to go to like get serious therapy. Right. Right. And right. that's the problem. That's the problem. He, and this guy. This of, guy. Of, even, yeah. Even more than that is he's not only saying like, here's why it's OK. He's trying to say this is why it's good for good her. for right. Her. <laughs> I'll go a step further. You know? The first thing he says about his partner is i found her that is so <laughs> fucked mm. up How, the f is she like what is she like a fucking lion in the jungle <laughs> that you've been looking for you gotta shoot her down <laughs> take her take the body down and drag it back and carve right. it up like this is a person you didn't find her she has a life right she existed she She's, existed yeah, yeah yeah you may have found each other or like you know what i mean like i found the one that language is like I hate, and I could give, again, your Reddit can tear me up for being anti-dude or, or whatever. No, there's no anti-dude. I, I don't know. That this anti-dude thing, thing, I don't even understand that's just him. That's that just language is, for me. That language is toxic. Yeah. No, like, uh, I, I think so. he's basically saying you're going to have to go against me. I'm usually put in the position of like going, here's defending why, them. defending a guy, going, here's the ickiness of this. Here's why he's doing this. This guy's taking things that I've said of like, here's why he's doing this and going and going to an extreme of like this. I This is not something look, I would ever go. Hey, you should be like, I get it. Look, I don't get it. Two years. I get like if, if the question that you're trying to answer, like what is adulterous? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's a broad spectrum. Right. That is like, that's where, fine, we'll right. do the dude thing of like, you know, getting your dick sucked is not fucking like, <laughs> you, can run it, you can run it up and down, right? Like, right, you know, like there's a million things that dudes will do to be like, whatever, yeah. you know, but this is not that. This 
is and I hope this guy is listening. Yeah. Because this language, he'll he'll be like, fuck that this language is like of the men that kill women. The, the, I hope he's listening and I hope he goes, you know what, I gotta take a look inside and realize that like just because I'm a man doesn't mean that I possess her and it doesn't mean that her weight or money making has anything to do with my value on the open market. And that is why this guy is trouble. And yeah. I hope he doesn't kill his girlfriend or whoever he's fucking on the apps. I um, <laughs> hope that as well. <laughs> I hope that as well, um, yeah. I mean, men yeah. kill women. No, no they, they do, I, yeah. I love the extremely strong take you have. And to me, it really shows why you have a successful marriage for 13 years. Because I mean, it's not even like you're like really even entertaining like the thought of of the reasons why this could be like you almost need that to be in a i'm not saying i'm perfect and i'm not saying that you know i haven't right. seen titty pics <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> i what i'm saying is that this guy's language specifically yeah in this email and the and the the warning signs like of and it's not just men like if anyone yeah. talked like that well it, it's funny just i i think what he's doing is the most dangerous thing of going yeah titty pics man right you know like he's using kind of guy like language to justify lying this to, horrific to thing that he's doing you because know like and, when you go on those apps again like i'm 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 not on the app. I don't know what the what the vibe is between in the in between people. You know what I mean? Like I don't know what it's like to like casually swipe right or casually swipe left. Right. But what I do know is that if you are swiping right, some part of your mind is going, this could be a match. Well, right. that's the one thing you have to I would say to this guy, like you know, he keeps saying I would never talk to someone. Well, what if you found the other yeah, one? Yeah, until, you know, like, because until I you haven't find found him yet. something right. else. And he right. even says that. Yeah. He's even like, oh, uh, like, you know, tell me you don't look on the open market. It's like, first of all, there's no open market. It's not, you're not walking into like Wuhan, China, picking out bats, you right. know, like the, it, that's not what people are. Well, when he's, when he's talking, it, this well, guy has a small I mean, dick and doesn't eat pussy. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, but I'm it's saying true. like you're Ask him. this guy's the, the fact that he's writing the idea of like a, a good relationship is you judging your partner against whoever else, else is, is out there. there. That's yeah. not a good. He, well, it's not but he's person. judging it against himself. She's not. Right. She's she likes to eat, but she's not fat. Go fuck yourself. Right. She she doesn't <laughs> make more than me, so I feel okay. I'm telling you, th I, th I hope this is anonymous email. Yeah. Yeah. This dude. I hope he gets in touch with you. Well, he's got to he go has, to therapy. He has, is, he has. Give a, us a follow up. And a, a, a micro penis, like it's some, like almost, <laughs> almost medically, it's a problem. Okay, send us a dick pic. And with on the top of that, we got to see. And on top of that, micro penis, he is, um, has definitely hates women. Right. Well, it seems as though th this guy needs well, therapy. Like this this, this yeah. email is he's like looked, doesn't look at them as like people. He's looking at them as like, what are they again? Like you said, like, what are they doing for my status? What are they? What does me dating someone like this say about me? Um, and what does it say about me if someone swipes right on my pick? Like, first of all, he said his his pick is faceless, right? Mm. So that means his. Did he say no, his no, 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 no. He's got a pick up there. No, he, he just, said. He says his pick is faceless, right? So it's just, it's just. Oh, oh come on, well, really? Did he say that? <laughs> no, I, I, I think he. What's at the end? Read the the, la the last one. No, says, he like, says that uh, I, if faced with the screenshots of my profile being up, I'll simply respond with the truth. What does like that he, mean? Th th so, th so if one of her friends is if like, one of her I friends goes, I saw on you the on the app. Yeah. Well, even when he says the truth is I've never once talked to or matched with a single woman since we started dating ever. No, that's not the full truth. The truth is I am on these apps to. Then what, my ego. So what is it then? What is so good for him on these apps? Just the idea that someone saw his face or body and said that could be a match. Like that's that's basically walking down the street, right? right. Like, it, well, it's it's it, it, this email. I don't know if he thought we'd read it and go, "You need serious therapy." But that's <laughs> what we're all saying. Like this is a moment to like you know it's, it, when we say it's like the symptom, right, not the. It's you know, not yeah. even yeah, like he's is, phrasing this like I have an addiction and I and I right. feel he's really insecure so, and yeah. I can't stop doing this. That would be one thing. He's so he's, disassociated. Right, right. What he's doing is defending it and saying like he wants us to say, "Yeah, that's okay." This is the worst part about being a guy. It is the you get it right, Jared, and you're like, I don't get it. Right, <laughs> like I, I get it for like again a week, month into something. 
I get how you get lost in the apps. You're addicted to it. You're addicted to the feeling. And then you're sitting there with someone that you're probably in a relationship with. Okay, but then to say, I'm just making sure it's well, so compared like, to the rest so, of the people. It's like you've so gone to another that, world. So thinking of that, I'll do some because we were hard on him. So I'll do something for him if mm. he hasn't turned it off already. Okay. <laughs> uh, which is to say, it is okay. It is okay what you're doing or what you've done. It's fine that you did it. It's fine. It's over. It's, it's a phase. Fine. It's a phase, whatever. Right. If you like want to be with this partner, give it more effort. There's redemption. You can find redemption every day. Right. Give it a little effort and see if it doesn't, and see if the effort that you're putting in doesn't come back to you and make you not want to be on the apps. And if it doesn't, then maybe you should think about breaking up with this girl. Th that's a great point. Because, you know, because like you don't have to pull the, you don't have to like sit on the grenade and, and open the door and be like, I've been on the apps. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you don't want to do that, don't right. do it. Off. Yeah. But, but how about you put a little more effort into the relationship you have and while you're taking a shit, go on Instagram right instead of this or delete it from your phone for a couple of days and see how it goes see how it feels and if and if it's not if you're like no i i feel like shit i'm not the man i thought i was i need someone to say they might possibly in some fictional world date me or else i feel like a fucking like whatever well, th that's the thing from this email that i was like it's not the most fucked up but it was like the most stand out that he never even said like you know i've tried to delete and it didn't work for me that's what i'm saying you know there's, like, no, there's no sense of him really thinking this is wrong no, he doesn't right. think yeah. it's bad to get right. likes on a dating app right? and it is bad and it is bad it's yeah. worse to me it's worse than having like um like if i found out my partner was on a dating app doing this mm. or if i found out my partner was like uh having like a text affair i'd be way more upset about this because this is sociopathic mm. Like, you know, you, you, like I, this is guess, jarring. So you're saying if you found out a text affair was happening, you go, well, you formed a relationship with I, someone like, else. Well, maybe well, it hap maybe, just happened. Let's get yeah. to the bottom of it. Yeah. Right. Are you, do you it, what's happening here? Right. This, I'd be like, hello, police. Right. I mean, you're, seeking, <laughs> you know, like you're like, seeking out other people. And it's, he's kind of like, it's not even like he knows these women on the apps. So he's like, yeah. And I haven't seen anyone on the apps that is hotter than my right. girlfriend. So... I feel good. Like, yeah, this but it's is... like, what if you did? So it's like, what does that make her feel? Like, I, you're only with me because you haven't found anyone hotter. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you know how much money she makes? Before? Right. Like, right. I'm sorry, I, this dude has like a right. uh, small dick that he can't get hard. And I, I'm telling you, he, his follow up would be, I swear to God, he has like uh, DJ Khaled style. Like, I don't eat <laughs> pussy. That's for <laughs> this guy. You know, he wears yeah. t shirts. That says like, I don't eat pussy. That's for wimps. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> Sure, pal. No licking for Nick. Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever it is. It's like, whatever. I, like, yeah. that, that, that is, I guarantee he, he, that is his vibe. Right. Well, I mean, the, 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 there's a, one more line that he writes that, like, I'm sure if she found out about this, she'd be upset. No, if she read this email, yeah. she'd be terrified. Right. If, right. She wouldn't be upset. She'd be scared. It's scary. Right. Well, this email, but like, if she found out, she wouldn't even know the half of it. Right. Like he, he, the way he sees it, seeing right. your, someone's profile on a dating app. Oh, I get a little bit of a rush from getting a like. It's not the is same worse as than the, the crime. Right. Way yes. worse. Yeah. Right. Way worse. Right. And then he knows that. And so he's living on that. Mm. You know, he's like, yeah, so what? I like to get feel, get a little dopamine from a like. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's like, well, that's a problem. Well, I know we've been sponsored by BetterHelp in the past. Maybe he. Uses the promo code out, and all yeah. that stuff. Honestly, but. I I the best thing that could happen is if he like fell in a sewer grate. Because <laughs> I don't know how much help. Like it's it's almost like too much for the government you're, to invest in. You got your in, next you know? show on your hands. 101 ways, you know, to, to die. To kill the to kill <laughs> oh, no, I just, I've, been, I've seen a lot of death. You know, there, every day we could get hit by a bus. It's a shame that this guy hasn't gotten one yet. You know? Wow. Well, we well, wish you COVID. Right. But the yeah. bad the older bad kind. Right. Yeah. And uh, Adam, this was fantastic. Thank you for yeah. coming on. Also, I should hashtag not all men. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is, <laughs> you don't have to do that. Okay. I'm, I was just thinking of you. I was thinking, I was thinking of you. <laughs> of me. <laughs> the, the audience is going gonna, is gonna to really enjoy this one. I think that's what they were, they've were they been waiting for. Yeah, for yeah. a guy to tell a guy to go kill himself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, they're going to be into that. <laughs> yeah. Right? Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> again, I'm not against city picks if anyone are out there sending them. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Adam Pally, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, really. And thank you for talking about the movie. It's, of it's course. It's a small movie, so it's so nice that uh, people get the word. No, we want people to go. so funny. These are the movies that don't get made a lot now. And yeah. these are the movies you got to support and, yeah, and totally. make an effort to kind of see. Totally. Um, and go buy it. Who invited Charlie? It's on all the streamers. You can go buy it on Apple uh, movies. That's a you know the easiest place for me to find stuff. So and the HBO show about partying. Yes, HBO. It's I mean that's streaming on HBO Max. One hundred and one right uh, places to party before you die. Right now. Uh, awesome. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. The U Up podcast is produced by Sean Kilby, Maddie Paul, and Jorge Morales Pico. Editing by Jorge Morales Pico. Social media by Maddie Paul. Be sure to follow at u.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Betches.